grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome those who are watching on Facebook Live this morning. I'll move my microphone up closer to my beard so you might have to turn the volume down. Just a little bit. Turn it down, brother. All right. Thank you. So good to see you all this morning in the sanctuary. It is good to be here, isn't it? What a beautiful day, and I want to lift up just a few announcements. Uh, first, the youth will be going Christmas caroling tonight. We are not going to go uh, to the nursing home. They've got over 20 cases of COVID there, so uh, we're going to avoid large gatherings. But we want to sing some Christmas carols to some of our homebound members. So we'll meet here at the church at 5. You all are welcome to go with us. Anyone who would like to tag along, uh, we welcome you to go along with us and have us sing. We'll have lyrics, so should be a good time tonight. Uh, also want to mention Wednesday night at 6 o'clock is our Blue Christmas service. I invite you to come and be a part of that. It will be a quiet, uh, contemplative service, uh, and it should be a beautiful service. And then Saturday... It's Christmas Eve. That's hard to believe, isn't it? So Saturday, we will have a Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock. I know a lot of families get together on Saturday evenings for Christmas Eve, uh, which is fine. If you can't make it, that's okay, because we're having Christmas Day services as well. Sunday, next Sunday. So we will not have Sunday school next Sunday, uh, but we will have worship uh, at 10.50 next Sunday morning. Uh, it will be a really short sermon, so uh, that may motivate you to come on now. <laughs> I'm thinking 30 to 40 minutes for that service because, again, so many families get together on Christmas morning. I know we'll be traveling to Jacksonville as soon as worship is over Sunday. So, any other announcements we need to lift up this morning? Yes, Dana has an announcement. Uh, just to remind you, the old walks is still out front as we're taking up the love offering, the Christmas blessing for church staff. So if you feel led to give, please do that. The old walks is just right out front. Okay, thank you, Dana. Yes, Dale. The thrift shop will be closed for two weeks, but we're open January the 3rd. Okay. Thrift shop closed for the next two weeks, <clears throat> reopening January 3rd. If there aren't any other announcements, let us open our hearts and our minds as we enter into this time of worship. Okay. Time, I would like to invite the key family to come forward for the lighting of the evidence. God will not be stopped. 
Airport or work himself will give you a sign. Look, a young woman is with child that shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know, even when we are not sure ourselves. God wants us to experience his presence, even when we think we can handle our own work. God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to know, all we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. And the gospel. In the gospel of Matthew chapter 1, we hear the story about the angel of the Lord visiting Joseph in his sleep. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as a wife, or as his wife, but had no marital relationships with her until she had born a son and named him Jesus. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy, and today of presence that speaks the love as a sign that no matter our circumstance, we know we are not alone. Please join me in the prayer of confession found in our bulletin and on the screen. God of joyous hope, proclaim peace, deep everlasting joy, and unconditional love. We have done wrong. We have tarnished the gift you gave freely. We have buried you so deeply in our hearts, the world doesn't see you. We have not followed Christ. We have ignored your teachings. We have lived lives of apathy against your love. We have built fences and fortresses to push you away. And we have silenced the cries of those who need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from our sins. Free us from our captivity. Free us to a life lived in joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The prophets of old have declared, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we have already been forgiven. If you are able, please stand and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> we have been looking for a sign. We have been waiting for a Savior. The time is near. Can it be? Come, let us worship the God of sign, wonder, and promise. Please join together in the first hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. You'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. It is also found in your hymn on page 220. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yep. There's a sheet. And I'm going to sit this way so you can see what we're doing today. And you're going to sit right here so you can face me. Just make a circle. Since there's all of about three gifts, the gifts of Christmas that we have, and we've talked about them, you know, all day, about all the different things that are happening at Christmas time. So I'm going to tell you three stories, okay? at least two stories. And this is a story about a little baby who went to the end of her town all by herself in her home, except she had two mice that lived with her. And... Christmas time, and she wanted to give something to her mice. Don't you like to give things to other people? So she looked and she looked around her little house to see if she could find anything that she could give to the mice. What do you think she might have found? Two pieces of cheese. So she wrapped those two pieces of cheese up and she put them someplace where she knew the mice would find them. And I'm just going to lay them down there. And the next time the mice were out looking around, guess what they found? They found those two pieces of cheese. Now these are Disney mice. So they look like Disney mice. And the two mice found the pieces of cheese. And they thought, oh, we don't have anything to give to the lady for Christmas, our little old lady that we live with. And so they took their two pieces of cheese and they went into the village and they traded those two pieces of cheese. And the next time when the lady came up, she looked around and they had given her what is this? a candle in a wreath. And she put it in her window because she wanted to know this is the only thing she had for Christmas. And you know what? There was a knock at the door. And the neighbors started coming. And they brought many, many things to share with her for Christmas. Cookies, another tree, some food. And so the she, she said to them, why did you come do this for me? And they said, because we saw your candle in the window, and we knew that the spirit of Christmas was in this house. And that's why they came to share with her. There was a little girl who wanted to give her mother a present. She didn't have any money and she didn't know what to do. So when she went to bed at night, she looked out her window and up in the sky she saw what? The moon. She saw the moon shining. And she wished and she wished and she said, oh, could I have a moon to give to my mother? Well, you know she can't have the moon. But she would like something to give to her mother. And the next day when she woke up on her window sill, what she see? She saw a little white disc that looked just like a moon. And when children get all excited, what do we do? We run, and she was running down the stair steps. She stuck the moon in her pocket, ran down the steps, and what'd she do? Fall, and it broke, and she was so upset. And so she said to her mom, I broke it, I broke it. And the mom said, go and see what you have. What does she have? She has an angel. Can you see the angel? She had an angel to give to her mother for Christmas. And the greatest gift that we have of all for Christmas is what? What is our greatest gift? The gift that God gave to us. What did God give us? Jesus, the baby Jesus. And that's what we all want to remember that the greatest gift given to us is the gift of the baby Jesus. And so this one takes just a second to do. And where was the baby Jesus born? So 
we want to remember why we celebrate Christmas, because of what Jesus was born. God gave Jesus to all of us to share at Christmas. <clears throat> so in our, in our stories, we shared with one another. <clears throat> we gave gifts to one another. And of course, the greatest gift was the gift that God gave to us. The baby Jesus. Yeah, in a manger. The baby Jesus in a manger. And so that's what we want to remember. And there is a song that I used to sing with my kids at high school. <clears throat> oh, it's on that bass line. It was in sign language, and it goes like this. On the day Jesus was born, on the day Jesus was born, on the day Jesus was born, the angels sang and played their horns, and they danced. They danced, they smiled and raised up their hands on the day, on the day when Jesus was born. So let us always remember that. Amen. Thank you for praying for us. Amen. Amen. God, may the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. During Advent, we prepare for and anticipate the coming of Christ. We remember the longing of the Jewish people for a Messiah, and we also remember our own longing for a Savior who will bring peace and wholeness to a world that is filled with tension, a world that is broken in so many ways. In this season, we look forward to celebrating the hope and the joy of the Incarnation and the love of Christ, which transcends the hate and division we see in our world. We recognize our own need for forgiveness, salvation, and new beginnings. The good news in our gospel reading this morning is that God is still creating. I don't know if you caught that in the gospel reading, but the story of God's Son entering our world is why we gather and celebrate each Christmas. The life of Jesus is why we gather and worship each and every Sunday. Through the incarnation, God has moved into our neighborhood, and because of this, we have hope. But the story of the incarnation is much bigger than just Christmas. The story of the incarnation began when God breathed the cosmos into existence through the Word. When I think about the incarnation, my first thought is John chapter 1 where John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. Jesus, the Word. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. You see, this was the first incarnation, the Word, the Logos, Jesus, there in the beginning. The creative logic that birthed the cosmos. In our text this morning, Matthew describes what is happening in Jesus as a genesis, a creation, a beginning. In Genesis 1, we read that a wind or pneuma or breath from God swept over the face of the waters. We see the same breath or spirit of God at work creating in Mary and Joseph in our scripture reading today in Matthew chapter 1. And this verbal link invites reflection on the place of this story in the story of God's creative work all the way back to Genesis. God spoke and the world came into being. The Spirit moved, right? Here again, by the Spirit and promise of God, a new creation comes into being. Now, early Christians frequently imagined the Christ event, especially the resurrection of Jesus, as the eighth day of creation. And that eighth day continues today. God's creative hand is still at work in our world today. And the mysterious power of this season of Advent and the anticipation of the birth of Christ and Christ coming again in final victory is the reality that God ain't done yet. God is still working. God is still moving. God is still creating in our world today. The spirit or breath of God is still moving in the lives of God's people. And through Christ, hope, peace, joy, and love are being born and sometimes reborn in our lives and in the lives of people all around the world. One of my pastors, really a hero of the faith for me, was Brother Paul Holderfield. And he used to remind us in this season 
that Christmas doesn't have to be and shouldn't be one day a year. Christmas should happen 365 days a year. You remember that, Kelly? Brother Paul always preached that sermon on Christmas. Christmas doesn't have to be one day a year. It should happen all year. The hope, peace, joy, and love we experience through Jesus should continue to shape our lives and how we live in the world that God loves and that God is saving every single day. So as we look forward to Christmas and celebrating the incarnation, the birth of our Savior, may we slow down and consider all the ways God is creating, breathing life into our lives and how God is inviting us to breathe life into the life, lives of others. Think about how God can use you to bring hope, peace, joy, and love to those around you. That's what our focus should really be on in this season, right? The ongoing work that God is doing in our world and how Christ invites us to join him in that work. How do we do that? I mean, we're all so busy. We've got parties and we've got gifts to buy and we've got caroling to do. There are so many things on our to-do list, aren't there? And if we're not careful, we will rush right through this season and miss the mystery of the incarnation and how Christ is being born anew in each of us. And so... Some of the ways we can do that this season, we can remember and really appreciate the mystery of the incarnation is to look for those who are lonely. Seek out those who are hurting in this season. That's really what our Blue Christmas service is all about. You know, Christmas isn't always great for everyone. There are those who every year at Christmas, their hearts grow heavy as they think about the losses they've experienced, as they think about the challenges they face each day. And that service is a time for them and for all of us to come together and to remember God's grace in our lives, even in the midst of deep darkness and pain. Look for those, seek out those who are hurting in this season. Open your hearts to the poor who struggle to find hope in this season of excess. I don't know how many times, how many commercials I've seen advertising brand new $60,000, $70,000 cards for Christmas. I went ahead and put that on my list and gave it to Kelly just in case. Those commercials are everywhere. Think about the advertising in this season. You need this. You need to give this, right? Give this to bring happiness. And we don't think about the act of giving, do we? We think about ourselves driving around in that new $70,000 sports car. At least I do, I'll confess. But it's so much more than that. It's about opening our hearts, opening our eyes to those who are suffering around us People are suffering. People are hungry. People are cold. It's about reaching out to the broken, to those who have been considered undesirable, those who find themselves alone and rejected and despised. It's about opening our hearts to those who in this season need to experience the birth of Christ in a very real way, in a way that, that we can participate in as the body of Christ. When we allow God's light and God's love to shine through us, that's what we mean by the eighth day of creation, God is still working. When we don't withdraw into ourselves and think about only our needs, when we when we have open hearts and open minds and open eyes to the suffering in the world around us and allow that light and love of Christ to flow through us into the lives of those who are beaten down, 
those who are discouraged, disheartened. And I believe that's really the call of the church, especially in this season, to share the peace, hope, love, and joy that we have experienced. And to make sure that that peace, hope, and love, and joy is experienced by all people. I love the reminder in this season of the baby Jesus, born to humble parents, living in poverty, struggling on the road, on the run. And Jesus is born to bring us hope. God set aside all of the privilege that God could have enjoyed right? God could have been born in a fancy palace as the king of kings, right? But now no. But Jesus comes and gives life to those who need it the most. The story throughout the scriptures is a story of ongoing creation. When we look at the scriptures from beginning to end, God is continually working and creating and restoring. And I think that's the message we read today in the gospel reading, the reminder through Matthew's gospel in chapter one that God is still creating, that the incarnation is in us and working through us. And so as God's people, may we allow the incarnation, may we allow Christ to be born anew in us so that we may bring healing and hope to a world that so often seems is dying, right? And so that's my prayer today, is that we would embrace that call, that we would truly focus on Christmas, not just experience Christmas next Sunday, but to make it a way of life where each and every day we are doing our part to renew God's creation. We are doing our part to share God's love with a world that God loves, with an extravagant kind of love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I invite you to stand now as you are able and join with me as we affirm our faith. The words of the Apostles' Creed are on the screen and also number 881 in your hymns. Let us join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Yes. If you please uh, keep my hand one minute before any prayer, she's in hospital still, but she's not going to last very long. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dad. 
Uh, yes, uh, Bruce had her family. Wife passed away unexpectedly. Okay. Okay. Bruce Pepper. Pepper. Okay. Call me for the Pepper family. Yes, Dana. Uh, the family of Arlene Crawford might have passed away um, Friday night. Okay. We're praying for them. Yes. I've also heard of that. Uh, Jackie Carlo, her husband passed away Sunday, not Sunday. Okay. Jackie Carlo. C A R L O. Okay. Uh, I remember the family of Elaine Griggs as well. Died last week. Others. Remember Ross Nelson in your prayers. He will be having a surgery soon on his back. So Ross and Karen are snowed in in Minnesota. <laughs> Other friends, sir? Well, there are several prayer concerns listed in your bulletin. I invite you to remember these. Take your bulletin with you this week and spend some time lifting these up in your prayers. And let us now go to the Lord in prayer. God of love, we have cluttered our lives with schedules so busy we barely have time to breathe. We plan, prepare, cook, clean, party, and wind up exhausted and wondering what in the world happened to the joyous Christmas that we had so long ago. In this place, on this day, you have called us together to hear your words of encouragement to remind us that you are with us and to invite us to join with you in the work of restoring creation. We do not need to rush about in order to have Christmas for the witness of your love is here among us right now in this moment of stillness and silence. And so we pray, God, that you would open our hearts and help us proclaim your presence. Help us reach out to one another in joy and peace. As we have brought our concerns to you in prayer, remind us again that you hold each and every one of us gently and lovingly in your constant care. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness when we fall short. And we ask all these things in the name of the one whom you sent to heal and free us. And we ask you, God, to hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us prepare to bring ourselves and our gifts to God. Will the ushers please come forward for this morning's tithes and offerings? Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for this moment when we can come together as your people to slow down from the busyness of our lives, God, that you would pour out your blessings upon these gifts, that they would be used to bring you glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.
and on hymnals. And remember the call of Christ on our lives to be disciples. Let us lift our voices together as we sing this closing hymn.